Austin put his law degree at Georgetown University on hold because he was tired of reading that reports on Syria couldn't be verified because it was too difficult for journalists to work there. He went deep into some of the most dangerous parts of the country and delivered award-winning reporting. I do not accept that he is missing. I live in a place where he is coming home. How do you sustain that optimism? <sighs> I don't have to sustain it. It's the most beautiful, miraculous gift that God is giving me every single day. I do not have to keep hope alive. It simply it encases me. For Mark and Deborah Tice, the last two years have been agony, waiting for news of their eldest son, Austin, an Eagle Scout, captain in the Marine Corps, and fearless journalist. We're hearing uh, some automatic gunfire and stuff from the surrounding area. Austin was taken outside Damascus in August 2012. This chilling video released weeks after his capture, the only sign of him since. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What was your reaction when you first saw it? I don't even remember because I, I went into physical shock. But nothing could have prepared the Tices for the horror of the executions of American journalists James Foley and Stephen Sotloff. Mark came downstairs again with that look again and that white face. I'm just begging him. What? What is it? What is it? What is it? I mean, it was just such a gut punch because we had such hope that that would never happen to an American journalist. Unlike Foley and Sotloff, Austin is not believed to be held by ISIS, and there has been no demand for money. But the Tices are conflicted about the U.S.'s strict policies on paying ransoms. If an American citizen is held hostage overseas, you are discouraged and disparaged if you even consider paying a reward for a precious human child because you don't know where that reward money is going to go. Do you think that the Foley and the Sotlow family should have been allowed to pay a ransom? You know, we're just the mom and dad. We just want our child back. And we want to do whatever it takes. One small source of comfort for the family has been the massive outpouring of support. We got an email from... <laughs> this is hard to talk. Uh, we got an email from a, a girl that worked at the same restaurant in Georgetown that Austin worked at. And she said, you know, uh, I was walking home at night by myself, and Austin noticed that, and so he started walking me home every night. Uh, you know, it wasn't, it was just a small thing, but, you know, he cared. Perhaps nobody knows that better than Austin's six younger siblings. Has it been hard on Austin's brothers and sisters? Oh, oh, it's been hard. Yeah. I think all of them, to a certain extent, feel like their parents have been captive for two years as well. Because in the same way that we can't talk to Austin. Our kids can't really have full access to us in the way that they did before this chunk of our heart was just locked away from us. I mean, it's, it will always be part of our lives. When Austin comes home, it'll still, we'll all be changed. Certainly, he'll be changed. Does that make you nervous at all when you think about how he might be changed when he comes home? One thing I feel sure of when Austin comes home, we will walk that path.